In this video, we're going to make our monosynth polyphonic. In order to create a polyphonic version of our synthesizer, we will be using the poly tilder object. The poly tilder object is used to load a special type of patch that represents one of the voices of our device. We will start by selecting all of the processing objects in our patch. The M2F, Phaser, Wave, ADSR, Divide and Multiply objects, then cutting them from our last patch. Then we will create a new patch and paste them in. This is the core processing of our voice, but we will have to add some features to this patch to prepare for interacting with our main device patch. First we have to create inlets and outlets so that the MIDI notes and user interface values can be received by the voice and to pipe the audio back out of the device. We will use different versions of inlets and outlets for this, the in object and the out tilder object. The first step is to create an out tilder object labeled out tilder one at the bottom of the patch and connect the output of the multiply object to it. This will route the output to the main patch through the poly object. In this case, we will need seven in objects to handle the MIDI, the loop start and stop points, and the ADSR settings of the envelope. We label each of these in objects with a number to determine which inlet it will represent when loaded by the poly object. After the inlets and outlets are set up, we have to add some extra logic to clean up the MIDI input. We will insert a float object after the M2F, abbreviated as F, to capture MIDI note data whenever it is input. Connect the M2F to the right inlet of F. We will then use an edge tilder object connected to the new envelope output of the ADSR to force output of the note value held in F at the beginning of a MIDI message. Connect edge to the left inlet of F. We preface all of this with a swap object, which allows us to force the pitch value to be set before the envelope begins firing. This really solidifies MIDI input and gives us a more stable MIDI front end to our synth. We have to communicate the voice's state to Polly when each voice is playing and or stopped. This allows Polly to allocate notes to an available voice. This is done using the this Polly tilde object, which tells Polly about the voice's status. The ADSR object is well equipped to interact with the this Polly object. You just connect the first outlet to let it know the output level and the third outlet which communicates the mute status. Once you've connected this up, the voice patch is complete and can be saved. Make sure you save it in the same folder as the main device patch in order for it to be found. Call it polygon underscore voice dot max pat. Now we return to the main device patch, which has a huge gap where the content used to be. We will replace that with a specially formatted poly tilde object. Creating a new poly object requires the name of the voice patch, in this case, polygon underscore voice dot max pat and some initial settings. Create a poly object with the following arguments, poly tilde, polygon underscore voice dot max pat, at voices two, at still one, at target zero. The first argument is the file name of the patch we wish to use as our voice. The voices attribute tells us the maximum number of voices to use. The still attribute tells the poly object to still voices if the number of notes to be played is greater than the maximum number of voices. The target attribute tells the poly object to send all incoming messages to all of the voices. If Polly is successful in finding the voice patch, it will create a version of itself with seven inlets and one outlet, 
matching the inlets and outlets of our voice patch. Now that we have the poly object created with the right number of inlets, we can start connecting all of the user interface objects, the waveform and the ADSR knobs to the inlets to Shruta 7. Since much of our MIDI management has been placed into the voice, you might be tempted to directly connect the node in object to the first inlet. However, we need to identify the incoming note as a MIDI message. So we will pack the pitch and the velocity values together, then prepend a MIDI note message to the front of the data. This will inform Polly that we will require note management and potential voice stealing. We may also want to control the number of available voices from our device interface. So we are going to create a numeric entry using a live.num box and prepending the voices message to the front of it. Finally, since playing a lot of voices can generate a higher gain output than a single voice, we will add a simple compressor to the output of poly before its connection to the live.gain. This gives us more control of the overall volume and reduces the likelihood of unwanted distortion. Save the patch and return to live. Now the synthesizer should respond to polyphonic playing, allow you to change the number of voices you can play and still use the drag and drop sample for playback.